Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe and the notification bell before we go any further and you realise how fucking garbage this content is. And if this is not your first time on the channel, you may want to give your head a wobble. But regardless of which one of these categories you fall into, thank you very much for being here. I do genuinely appreciate it. Now for today's video, we're going to be taking a look at my revised deck profile for dinos. That's right, those of you who are familiar with the channel may have seen my deck profile before a few weeks back. However, we've now gone ahead and transitioned to the fantastic scrap dinos. Now I've had mixed results with this so far, mostly because of lack of testing. However, it's now starting to go on the uptick, which is fantastic news for all involved. Of course, not being quite so sharp in the deck has had negative results. But that is not a fault of the deck necessarily, and more just me having a bit of bad luck more than anything else. So we decided to refine the deck. We had some really cool spicy ideas in there before, but it was bricking just a little bit too much. So we've refined it, we've cut it right back, and I think that I've got the balance just right on this deck. Now, if you are watching today's video and you're feeling inspired to go out and pick up some Yu-Gi-Oh! singles, you should check out the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. There will be a link down in the description to their eBay store. And if you go ahead and use that, you'll get yourself a cheeky discount courtesy of yours truly. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck in to the deck profile. So as promised for today's deck profile, we are taking a look at my scrap dino list. Now there are a couple of caveats I would add here. Uh, there are a few different ways that I've changed this deck and tried different things. This is just a build that I feel has been working best for me. Of course, we're only playing at locals at the moment, so we do have limited exposure to the format. And of course, it is very diverse at the moment. So you kind of have to build with a little bit of that in mind. Now, primarily that affects the side deck because, of course, we're building for what our locals are. However, I do think that this side deck could work in a variety of different bubbles. But hopefully this is all clear enough for you guys that you can see on the screen. I'm going to go ahead and move these out of the way and we'll get stuck in to the main part of the profile. So we start off with two copies of Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. Uh, I think two is absolutely perfect. You really don't need the third. Uh, it's too bricky if it does come up. Unfortunately, there are occasions where you do want the third, but there's really not a whole lot you can do about it, and you kind of have to just accept the two is the perfect ratio. One is definitely not enough. You're going to burn through multiples, potentially. Uh, but there's a lot of the time your opponent's decks aren't going to be able to handle more than one. They may have the out for one, but probably not for two. And this, of course, is a really important going first card in this deck, especially considering how we're now playing playing it when we went second it was obviously fantastic for that as well but going first it's still a very powerful card we have a single copy of pancratops for the longest time i kept taking this out because i'm a fucking idiot there's really no other way to explain it um pancratops i used to take it out when i went first because i thought it was no good but in dinos it's really good going first it can be a good interrupt to have on the board um you always want to see it in your hand it's just always very easy to get on board um i really don't need to elaborate on it more the card's absolutely broken Triple copies of Soli in Overraptor. Uh, without this at three, frankly, the deck is unplayable. This card is so incredibly important in your combos. Uh, it just, it does absolutely everything that the deck needs. It's a mandatory to play uh, three of. We also have triple copies of Miscellaneousaurus. People are already coming for this card's head. They want it gone on the list. I frankly don't care. It makes the deck so much more solid. I honestly think that with this card at anything less than three, the deck drops right down the tier lists. Um, it's an absolutely insane card. It does so much for you. And if nothing else, you can use it to bait other cards, which is always a good feeling. Unfortunately, these ones are in a horrible gold rarity. Shout out to Jam Jam Cards UK for making me feel like a fucking idiot by playing maximum gold rare cards. Two copies of Animadorn Arcosaur. This is a card that once upon a time I was running at a single copy. I didn't feel the need for extras. However, you do genuinely get to resolve this multiple times. And in fact, sometimes this will be my normal summon over Overraptor. If I've got this and a baby, summoning the Overraptor off the baby always feels a hell of a lot more beneficial from my experience. And it's usually the go-to card. Now, whilst we're looking at the level 1s, I do want to make a quick mention that I was playing this card before. And if you're wondering why the fuck I would do that, it was to make Nat Beast. It's the level 1 that can also search Pancratops with its second effect, which is really cool. And of course, being a level 1, you can put it with Scrap Raptor to make Naturia Beast. The problem I found, and if you're thinking about trying a card like this, is that very rarely do you ever actually want this 
over something like the Jewel Beast. Uh, it just doesn't come up enough. It's a really cool idea, I think, on paper. Maybe if you've only got one copy of Arcosaur, it might be something nice to add. The other problem you've got as well is that Nat Beast really isn't as difficult as it used to be to out with likes of Forbidden Droplet and stuff kicking around. So it just didn't come up as much as I would have liked it to. However, it might be a card that you want to try out, particularly if you're trying to play the deck on a little bit more of a budget. But I digress, let me get that out the way. So, onto our babies here. We've got triple copies of Baby Cerasaurus. Uh, it needs to be at three copies in the scrap variant. You want to see them all the time. You don't care if you open them in your hand. In fact, if anything, it usually benefits you. Um, if not, you just search them. You don't care. Petit Tyranodon acts like just an extra copy of one of these. It's not quite as good or as flexible, but it's better than none. And of course, it becomes a fourth copy effectively anyway. A single copy of Giant Rex to round off our main deck dinos. Uh, this is an incredibly important part of most of the combos that I go into. I find that you need to play it anyway. Honestly, I just think you absolutely have to play it. Giant Rex is a very, very solid extender. And that is it for the main deck dino, so we're going to go ahead and move those out of the way. Next, we move on to our hand traps. Of course, our one brick. Uh, it's necessary evil so that we can play this. Um, Gamma is fantastic. It's becoming more and more powerful by the minute, I feel, in the format. Really, really strong. Can just end turns on its own. Quite often, we'll side these out if we don't need them, uh, usually after game one. Uh, but it can be a really, really powerful option to keep in there available to you. We then have triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring, the most generic of the hand traps, in my opinion, the one you absolutely have to play. There's virtually no deck in the game that can't take advantage of this card, and there's virtually no deck in the game that doesn't get hurt by it in some capacity. It's very, very good at absolutely destroying the likes of rogue decks that really rely on those one odd effect to go through, and in this format, there are a lot of rogue decks doing the rounds, ones that will catch you off guard and will smash the fuck out of you if you're not ready. Cards like this just help you get there, and of course, against the most powerful decks, it can be a really important interrupt so again for me ash blossom and joy of spring a mandatory three of and absolutely far more budget friendly than it was not so long ago then for our scrap engine actually quite a tight package here two copies of raptor and one copy of chimera so at various points in my testing i've tried this with three scrapter i found that it was too bricky or too cloggy it meant that my deck was too big so i was less consistent uh, i also tried running the fridge for a while as well uh, scrap golem uh, it was just too bricky it didn't do enough to warrant again bumping up depth deck size for anything else of course we've got a single copy of scrope chimera here the german version literally called scrope chimera bit weird um this card obviously is mandatory to play in here as well, in my opinion. Uh, just two of these, and one of this is more than enough to get your combos going. Obviously, you're normally going to be searching this or summoning it off a baby to go about your plays from there. It really does add another level to the ceiling. It means that often we're ending on the likes of uh, Appaloosa, UCT, Savage. Uh, we can also go for Scythe instead of Appaloosa, normally in conjunction with Dagda uh, and Tornado Dragon as well. So depending on what we're playing against, depends what we go into. It just gives you such much more flexibility to go. And on that note, we have our single copy of Scythe. Um, yeah, most decks really suffer when you summon this, and most don't seem to stop it for some reason. So, still a very, very strong card, especially against the likes of Dragon Link and things like that. Uh, combo decks, it just absolutely shuts them off and stops them playing. So, fantastic card in my opinion, and one that you really should be playing. We then move on to our spell cards. We've got Triple Lost World and a single copy of Terraforming. Now... There are, there have been deck profiles in the past, especially recent past, where I've ran less than three copies of this. That is absolutely incorrect. You need to run three copies of Lost World. This card is so incredibly powerful and so incredibly important to the strategy. I cannot overstate enough how much you need to run three copies of that. And of course, Terraforming is going to help you get to it. Triple copies of Fossil Dig, uh, it's, it says search basically anything. Why this card's at three baffles me. Two copies of Double Evolution Pill. Two is plenty, three is too much, one is not enough. You want to be able to resolve those Arcosaurs. Quite often you'll end up searching these just for the sake of it, just so that you can resolve your Arcosaur. Triple copies of Pot of Prosperity, in my opinion, the absolute important card in this deck. Quite often you'll find that you only ever need one small piece to get your entire combo going. And especially if you go in second, maybe you just need a lightning storm to be able to wipe out the opponent. Cards like this help you get there. If you see it turn one, it really doesn't matter that you're going to half the damage and all that stuff. Because you just don't care because you're not going to kill them that turn anyway. But it means that they can't play the game and it means that you win. Three copies of Pot of Prosperity, in my opinion... Absolutely mandatory. If you really can't do this, use the likes of Extravagance. Use the like of Desires. Probably preferable to Extravagance. Because the extra deck is far more important in this particular build. 
And our final card for the deck, called By the Grave. I never, ever see this card. I never see it. It just never, ever appears in my hand. But I feel like the moment I take it out, I'm going to regret it and just, like, miss not seeing it anyway. So, a one-off. And really, they need to just put this card back to three already. I'm fed up. Now for the extra decks, we've got a single copy of Dolka, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Single copy of Lagia, again, pretty self-explanatory. Dweller, much the same. Tornado Dragon, much the same. Dugares just helps us, of course, being able to OTK or unclog and uh, see extra cards in our hand, which, of course, comes up. Linkaribo is Linkaribo. It helps you get stuff into the grave, uh, dinos in particular. It can help give you protection. It can help open up link zones if you want to use additional ones. It can do all kinds of good stuff. It's just really cool. And, of course, in the mirror match, it can keep helping you get rid of those tokens that your opponent puts onto your side of the field. Secure Gardener for linking off Link Rebo and getting an extra body into Grave. Dagda for that combo with Scythe, being able to cuck our opponents. What's not to like about that? Scrap Wyvern for the scrap combos, absolutely important, really cool card. Phoenix for a bit of utility. Uh, it doesn't come up as much as Tornado Dragon. In fact, it doesn't come up much at all. But there are occasions where it happens. You could substitute this for something else, but I feel like the utility is really important. Uh, Lambda is strong, of course, if you've got Gamma, it's very good. You can also use this to make your opponent think that you've got a Gamma in hand and that will often stop them. Um, it's worth noting that a lot of the time you're going to go into stuff like this just to clear zones on your board and get materials into Grave, but it does come up. It does come up. Pentastag enables so many OTKs, it's absolutely unreal. The amount of times I end with this, with UCT underneath and Dugaros, and just punch my opponent twice for game, absolutely incredible. I love this card. A single copy of Appaloosa, where the structure of the deck has gone up in terms of its ability to produce cards and materials. Appaloosa is far more usable. Usually you're going to end on three or four materials, depending on your luck, of course, and what your hand is like, and if you play it all correctly. But it can be a fantastic option to go into. Borrowload Savage Dragon, far more easy to make in this now, of course, with the Scrap Engine. Very, very powerful card. We already know about that. And our final card is Psy Frame Lord Omega. Uh, we have the package in here. It is just a generic 8 as well that you can use if you want to. Uh, it can help you recycle materials that you can use for Misk. All of the good stuff that you could possibly want. Of course, ripping cards out your opponent's hand is always quite a nice feeling. And then we move on to our side deck. So I've got triple copies of Artifact Lancia. This honestly just blows out so many different decks in the game. It helps you win the mirror. It helps win against the likes of Invoked uh, and plenty of other decks for that matter. Of course, the likes of Tri Brigade, of course, get hit by this as well. So very important. And of course, you can actually get this off Dagda as well. So that's another option for it. We have triple copies of Droll and Lockbird. Again, this hits so many of the important meta decks. Just not quite enough to go in the main because the format is too diverse. Triple copies of Ghost Bell. Incredibly, incredibly strong. Again, this format, I, re I highly recommend playing this, particularly for the Tri Brigade match, but plenty of others get hit by it as well. Triple copies of Lightning Storm or Blitzstorm. If you are German, uh, it, yeah, I don't need to elaborate. Harpy's Feather Duster, yeah. Uh, and double copies of Dark Ruler No More. We ran out of spaces along with Feather Duster being in there. Meant we had an odd number. Uh, Dark Ruler is Dark Ruler. So my amigos is the deck profile, of course. If you want, you can go ahead and slow that down and take a look through what's there. If you have any questions about the build, definitely let me know down in the comments. And that, my amigos, is all for today's video. By virtue of the fact that you've made it this far, hopefully you have enjoyed it enough to have hit subscribe if you haven't already. Maybe you even hit the notification bell if you haven't already. Or at least hate it enough that you couldn't possibly look away. Once again, either way, regardless of which one of those categories you fall into, thank you very much for making it this far into the video. Now, it is worth noting that this isn't the only kind of content that we do on the channel. I do locals vlogs, I do combo tutorials, I do how to play videos, and all kinds of other fantastic stuff that you're looking for in your YouTube content. Now, if there is something that you'd like to see on the channel, maybe there's a deck you'd like to see covered, maybe a deck profile you'd like to see done, maybe you want to see some live duels again, we haven't done some of them in a while. Whatever it is you're in here looking for, do go ahead and let me know down in the comments. I do take the time to read as many of them as I possibly can. And of course, you can find me on any of my other social media with links down in the description to each of those. And once again, I'm very easy to get hold of. But anyway, that's enough waffling on for me. Thank you very much for coming along. Once again, thank you for making it this far into the video, and I will see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.